Let's consider the situation of an inclined plane and a box sliding down the inclined plane. And we'll, we'll say that the inclined plane is at some angle theta, and then here's our box. Now, we have friction, and we have a normal force, and we have gravity. Let's draw the forces as they act on the box. Well, the normal force acts at the interface of the two surfaces. And let's give that an N for normal force. The force of gravity always acts at the center of mass. And that might be a little too big for what I want to do. Let's say the box is not quite that massive. And we'll call this force the weight. And then finally, we, all, we have friction. Friction acts at the interface of the two surfaces and is always parallel but opposite the direction of motion. By the way, note that the normal force is called the normal force because it's always perpendicular to the surface. So, for example, if I had a box against a wall, someone was pushing it against the wall, well, the normal force would act this way, perpendicular to the wall. Okay, back to the problem at hand. Let's draw the free body diagram for this situation. Now, when you do rotational mechanics, it, it actually really depends where the force is acting. But for Newton's law type problem, we, only, we can draw it as a dot, and we only need to know which forces are acting on which objects. So in this case, we've got a normal force going this way, force of gravity going straight down, and friction going up. The way I like to solve these problems, because it makes life easier, is to rotate your coordinate axis such that the x-axis points in the direction of motion and the y-axis is perpendicular. Let's get rid of this little smart board snafu here. There we go. And these are the forces that are acting on the box, but in order to solve the problem, because we know Newton's second law tells us that when you add up all the forces, they equal ma. But this is a vector problem. So really, we get two situations. We get the x direction, where in the x direction, we have all of the forces here. And that equals the mass of the box times the acceleration. And then we also have the y direction. And in the y direction, there is no motion. And therefore, there's no velocity. And therefore, there's definitely no acceleration. Well, let's figure out which forces are in the x direction and which forces are in the y direction. Well, clearly, the normal force is in the y direction. So let's put that down here. And it's in the positive direction, so we got a normal force there. Well, friction is in the x direction, and it's negative. So I'll put a negative friction here. And that will equal ma. Where, again, the acceleration is the acceleration down the incline. The weight of the object, that is the force of gravity, is a little trickier here because it's in both the x and the y direction. So we need to break this into its two components. The component of, of the weight that's in the y direction, this balances the normal force. And the component that's in the x direction, and this one causes the acceleration, assuming it's larger than the friction force. And even though they look equal, let's assume it's slightly larger. 
So this is the weight in the x direction, and this is the weight in the y direction. Well, one thing that's very important to notice is that this angle here is the angle theta. And I can prove that real quickly. If we extend the normal line out like this, we see we have a right triangle here. And if this one is theta, then this one is 90 minus theta, which I'll call phi. And because this surface forms a perpendicular 90 degrees, well, then this has to be theta. Theta plus phi here equals 90 degrees, just like theta plus phi here has to equal 90 degrees. Again, because these are right triangles. Therefore, knowing that the angle is, is, is the same angle, the angle here is the same angle as on the incline, then I know that the weight in the y direction is equal to the total weight times cosine theta. And since the weight of an object is given by mass times gravity, I'll write mg cosine theta theta, and therefore the weight in the x direction is equal to mg sine theta. How do I know that? Because I know trigonometry, and when I have a triangle of some angle theta, a right triangle that is, well, cosine of that angle equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Let's call the adjacent side x, the opposite side y, so it's x over, and I'll call this h for hypotenuse, over h. And you do a little algebra, and you solve for the, um, well, in this case, you solve for the weight in the y direction, and similarly for sine theta. So let's finish our equation below. Well, here we would plug in mg, running out of space, so I'll have to squeeze it in, sine theta. And here it's the normal force minus mg cosine theta. And that equals zero. So notice that the normal force is not equal to the weight on an inclined plane draw that bold. Normal force not equal to the weight. The normal force simply balances the y component of the weight acting in that direction. This should get you started on the inclined plane type problems.